हेलो आई एम डॉक्टर अजय शर्मा डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स एंड कम्युनिकेशन इंजीनियरिंग जेम्स इंजीनियरिंग मैनेजमेंट टेक्निकल कैंपस नॉलेज पार्क थ्री ग्रेटर नोएडा द सब्जेक्ट दैट आई टीच इन दिस सेमेस्टर फॉर बीटेक सेवन सेमेस्टर स्टूडेंट्स ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स एंड कम्युनिकेशन इंजीनियरिंग ब्रांच इज ऑप्टो इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स एंड ऑप्टिकल कम्युनिकेशन एंड द टॉपिक दैट आई डिस्कस टूडे इन दिस लेक्चर इज सेमी कंडक्टर फोटो डायो डिटेक्टर सेमी कंडक्टर फोटो डायो डिटेक्टर और यू में से फोटो डायोड फोटो डायोड इज ए जनरल और जनरल डिटेक्टर और बेसिक डिटेक्टर राइट तो सेमी कंडक्टर फोटो डायोड इज ए बेसिक डिटेक्टर दैट इज यूज इन ऑप्टिकल कम्युनिकेशन फॉर कन्वर्जन ऑफ ऑप्टिकल सिग्नल इन टू इलेक्ट्रिकल सिग्नल सो सेमी कंडक्टर फोटो डायोड जनरेट ए करेंट वेन दे एब्सॉर्ब फोटोन मीन्स लाइट लाइट इज कंपोज ऑफ वेरी स्मॉल पार्टिकल्स and these small particles are known as known as photons right so the this particular photodiode it's basically a diode having a p n junction this particular photodiode had a have ha, has a active area you know we you know active area is that area of photodiode where where there is a impact of photons or light from outside so the light that is coming from optical fiber is has an impact on that active area of photodiode right so in that active area when these photons are absorbed by this photodiode so energy is transferred to the you know to the to the covalent bond electrons they are bonded together but when they absorb energy they just leave their lowest valence band and reach to conduction band and when the electrons reach to conduction band electrons become free and free electron cause electric current so electric current that we get in photodiode is because of free electrons free electron is because of absorption of energy absorption of energy or power is from photons and photons are coming from a light in optical fiber right so in this way uh the power or the optical signal optical energy optical power converted into photon right so if you look in this particular figure the photon or you may say photons but in figure we have we have for example in this particular figure we just take the case of one photon although hundreds or thousands of photons are coming from outside from outside means from optical fiber that have a impact on active area of photodiode but in this particular picture we consider a photon and this photon have a energy h mu where h is planck's constant and mu is frequency of photon right so and this particular photon having energy h mu has a impact on a uh, covalent bond then this covalent bond absorb energy and electrons are energized an electron when the electron are energized when they leave their lower lower valence uh, band and jump this energy band eg because the condition is that if h mu which is the energy of the photon should be 
greater than or equal to a band gap energy eg so if this condition is fulfilled then this h mu have a sufficient energy so that this energy is absorbed by this electron and reach to conduction band which is the upper band so lower band is a and leave the hole in the valence band so free electrons in upper band which we called as a conduction band and holes in uh, a valence band and between electron between valence band and conduction band there is a energy gap eg so the photon energy h mu should be greater than or equal to a band gap energy of the material that is used in the manufacturing of this detector so the amount of current generated depends on the following factors number 1 the wavelength of the incident light and the responsivity of the photodiode at those wavelength right so the amount of current that you get at the output of the detector actually depends upon the wavelength and uh, responsivity of that of that detector so two factor decides the amount of current at the output and second the size of the photodiode active area related to the fiber core size this is also a second factor on which the output current depends now the optical fiber is coupled to semiconductor photodiode similarly to the way optical sources are coupled to optical fibers so fiber to photodiode coupling involves entering the flat fiber and phase over the photodiode active area so this photodiode is coupled to the optical fiber so the energy that is flowing or guided by this optical fiber reaches to this photodiode right so when the light that is coming from other end of the optical fiber or at the receiver side then this light should have a impact on active area of the uh, photodiode and uh, this is normally done directly by butt coupling so we use butt type of coupling so the, uh, so this is normally done by directly at butt coupling the fiber up to the photodiode surface right so do, by using the butt coupling all the light that is coming from optical fiber uh, you know after coming from uh, optical fiber is totally uh, is has then has a impact on this active region or surface of the photodiode so as long as the photodiode active area is uh, larger than that of the fiber core fiber to detector coupling losses are very low now come to the semiconductor material and device uh, properties the mechanism by which optical detectors converts optical power into electrical current requires knowledge of semiconductor material and device property so you know the when you made this uh, optical you know this diode which uh, act as a optical uh, detector or photodiode then this photodiode should be manufacturing from some special uh, semiconductor material that have the property of you know that have the property to give uh, a free electrons after absorption of this photons so we have a very special type of semiconductors uh, for that particular work for that particular conversion so the semiconductor detectors are designed so that the optical energy photons incident on the detector active area produce a current right so though so semiconductor detectors are such a so it's it's totally depends upon design and the semiconductor material so that the optical energy or the photons which are incident on the detector active area produce a current and this current is called a photo current why we called a photo current because the current is mainly because of the photons because one thing is also be uh, noted is that all the photodiodes or the optical detectors uh, operate on negative biasing because we want current because of the photons not because of the biasing right so biasing is negative biasing you know negative biasing as you used because we want current because of photons not because of the external voltage source so these photodiode actually operate on uh, reverse biasing or negative biasing 
or reverse biasing in then equilibrium this so that we can say that whatever the output whatever the current that we get from this photodiode is totally because of a photon not because of biasing so the particular properties of the semiconductor are determined by the material used and the layering of the material within the device so silicon si gallium arsenide gaas germanium ge and the indium phosphide inp are the most common semiconductors material used in optical detectors so these optical detectors so the material that we use the special materials are silicon and germanium and uh, mostly optical detectors are manufactured from this type of material because this material have these type of properties that you know that uh, so that the, this optical detector pro diode uh, do this very special type of uh, you know uh, phenomena phenomena of conversion conversion of you know uh, electric uh, optical energy into a electric current so that's why we use these type of semiconductor devices to manufacture this photodiodes now come to the term uh, responsivity this is a very important term related to the photodiodes or optical detector and we already discussed this responsivity in previous video lecture i once again uh, i once again give you the concept of responsivity responsivity is nothing but is the ratio of the optical detector's output photo current in amperes to the incident optical power in watt so the and we represent this responsivity by a capital letter r and its unit is obviously ampere per watt so ampere per watt is the unit of this responsivity right so the responsivity of a detector is a function of the wavelength of the incident light and the efficiency of the device in responding to that of wavelength right so this responsivity of detector actually depends upon the wavelength and you know if you go through the books you will find the mathematical expression of this responsivity uh, in later uh, video lectures i uh, i i i will show the mathematical model of this responsivity where you will see that the responsivity actually depends upon the wavelength of the light right so that you will see in later right so responsivity actually depends upon the wavelength of the light that is coming right for a particular material only photons of certain wavelength will generate a photo current when they are absorbed this is also very important concept you know all photons are not necessary to give you a free electron right so those particular photon have it of a certain type of wavelength that contains certain type of frequency when they absorbed by this active area of detector give you a photo current so that thing is also clear that not all photons are, when they absorbed give you a current right so additionally uh, uh, the detector material absorbs some wavelength better than others this is also be true then the you know met, you know the absorption process actually depends upon the wavelength right some of the wavelength Uh, some of the frequency that photon have are good absorbs to the surface rather than others right so responsivity is a useful parameter for characterizing detector performance because it relates the photo current generated to the incident optical power so this responsivity is very very important term and uh, in examination you know in examination many times the numerical will be asked based on this responsivity so in later video lecture i will show you the mathematical equation or the mathematical model of this responsivity where you will see that how the responsivity is depends upon the wavelength of or the frequency of the photons that is coming from optical fibers right so this is all about a general photodiode general photodiode and i also said that in previous lecture that as far as the optical detector is concerned we have a general photodiode that we discussed today then we have a pin photodiode and then we have a avalanche photodiode both are in syllabus so in next video lecture we will focus on pin photodiode as well as avalanche photodiodes then this optical detector uh, this particular topic uh, will be completed when we will we will 
discuss rest of the two photodiodes so thank you very much that's all